Hula! Welcome to Cloud Break, Fiji. I am delighted to be here, as is everybody else here on the IWT Tour. This is the 2022 Fiji Pro Invitational, and me and my friends have been scoring Cloud Break, and it is firing right now, and we have waited patiently for this moment to bring you what is arguably going to be one of the most unique wave sailing events you've seen in a really long time because we have exclusive rights to one of the best waves in the world and that is cloud break in the beautiful island fiji islands kai kachadorian here and there you see that slice of reef an epic epic setup both for surfing and windsurfing Cloud breaks on par with the great breaks in the world for windsurfing like Punta Preta. And it is a port tack wave, high level of difficulty, very hollow. As I was saying, surfing yesterday and cloud break, if you talk to somebody like Robert Swift, Morgan Noiro, one of the best days of surfing in our lives. You know, just an absolutely memorable experience. And while we're on the subject of surfing, there were about 40 people here in the water not too long ago who very cooperatively cleared the water as soon as it got windy. We've been waiting a long time for this forecast and it is finally manifesting into what we have here, which is four to six foot cloud break, pretty consistent and windy. Uh, in a certain manner of what you look for in these Fiji lineups and that is that up top the reef that you see there It is kind of blowing side on shore, but as this wave wraps down the line that wind starts bending more and more offshore and We have got five minutes left until the first heat of this competition And I will get my heat sheet in front of me shortly I'm just getting my bearings here because we are on the MS thundercloud a fine vessel on the inside here looking up into the lineup and this is the ultimate definition of a mobile event let me tell you if we're just rolling around the inside at cloud break five minutes away from the first heat of the pro men's ripper charge round here and let me just describe to you how we got this out here uh, at about 7 30 in the morning today we loaded up a bunch of boats with gear and uh, the mothership here, the Thundercloud, slowly made its way out here to cloud break. And bit by bit, things started to pull together here. Started getting windy uh, not too long ago, but the swell's been here all day. And uh, which is a really, really good thing. We're lucky in this window and we really want to get as much done as we possibly can. And it's looking very possible for that. So take a look at the lineup here. I'm going to get you into the first heat here and it's being done the following way. It is 25 minutes of competition with a five minute turnover time. And that leads us, you know, to five riders are in this heat. Two are going to be seated further forward and three will be in, in what's called the, it'll be the next round. So you get seated an extra round if you're in the top two of these first heats open pro round one is Morgan Waro, Camille Juban, Liam Dunkerbeck, Russ Faro and none other than Liam's father Bjorn Dunkerbeck you heard me correctly and that is an absolutely historical moment and let me tell you it's not lost on Bjorn <laughs> who looks so proud and happy he's near tears thinking about this moment I promise you I promise you, Bjorn's feeling every bit as emotion as you can. How blessed are we to be here at Cloud Break? And I just want to say Vinaka to the wave and wind gods for providing us this opportunity. I'm so excited to be bringing it to you. We're really lucky to be here. And it's been absolutely the right call to run today. And we'll do the most we can with it. We're not going to waste resources here. The lineup looks pretty interesting. Uh, from my perspective, you know, you might not see it from this drone angle, but you see roping cloud break, but you don't, you know, see the amount of white caps that I'm seeing. It might be one of the situations, side on shore wise, that it might look windier than it actually is. Guys are on 5 O's, 
Um, you know, in Bant's case, I heard four six. That's like his big sale. Um, there's a there's just a lot to play for in this first round, uh, just to get some seating. But I assure you, as we wind down the clock here, this got to be two minutes to go until the start of this first heat. Once again, Morgan Noirot, Camille Jubon, Liam Dunkerbeck, Russ Faro, and Bjorn Dunkerbeck. Round one, Open Pro, coming right up, two minutes. And we are just going to do a little U-turn here on the SS Thundercloud and get really in position here. Look at Cloudbreak in this reef setup. This wave horseshoes in off the top. And, you know, I've surfed here twice now. I don't know it nearly as well as the legacy of people who have come here and ridden, but I can tell you my jaw is on the floor. This is easily one of the best waves I've ever surfed or windsurfed. And there's been a handful of sessions here leading up to this. We really didn't want to pull the trigger on anything insignificant. We wanted to wait for the right day and the right moment. And that's an art in itself in this part of the world. Because as I've been finding, forecasts change here a lot. And, um, you know, if you talk to the local surfers, maybe it hasn't been the best year on record. What I will say in response to that is that even, even Fiji has to give in some time. And the stars have aligned and we're being given a golden opportunity to run here with one minute left until the start of this heat. And I'll call you into it as it happens. Heat number one is on. And uh, that's an insider breaking at Shish Kebabs with the appropriately named inside section at Cloud Break. And from my vantage point here, you want to get out of trouble before you end up really too far down Shish Kebabs. We watched Antoine in the warm up punt a wicked aerial and end up right down low there. And. <laughs> You do have jet ski assistance here, but you don't have a whole lot of time. You think 25 minutes is a long time. It's not. So this heat is on, and there are definitely some sets coming. I'm not necessarily seeing immediate action here, which is going to give me the opportunity to kind of launch into our sponsors and the people we want to thank opening up here. We want to thank Tourism Fiji. Open for happiness because happiness comes in waves. We're very happy to be working with you and thank you so much for your support. And we want to thank Fiji Surf Company, of course, Ian Muller, Kalani Muller, Sanji, Tick, Philip, Sugo, and all the people from Fiji Surf Company. We greatly appreciate everything you've given. Some of the friendliest people in the world are here in these islands. The people of Fiji, you know, thank you for keeping our crew safe and line up and sharing your knowledge of these waves with us. There's nothing else to say that we're thrilled to be welcomed by the Fijian people to these magical waters and overjoyed to be here it's truly an honor and it's you know going to provide like Ian Miller said it's truly you know an opportunity to show the world of water sport what modern windsurfing can do in such a challenging and inspiring environment because Cloudbreak known as Kurukuru Mailani is in charge here and Cloudbreak's going to allow these guys to do what they can do it's more than a full challenge at any of these riders capacity say no more cloud break is unlike any wave on earth and it certainly gets very good for wave sailing and right now we're seeing the southeast trade wind gradually graze this lineup it hasn't fully filled in yet we want it to start at one on the button it seemed like the winds really gonna pick up the most right around two o'clock something like that and blow until dark even the surfers in the lineup were saying it you know it might get kind of windy later you guys are stoked the vibe was good in the lineup i must say and uh thank you to all the surfers from all the different you know surfing camp establishments nearby and far away that allowed us to compete here we really appreciate it thank you all right with me now is simeon glasson iwt tour director and uh, Simeon, we're uh, just getting started with this heat. We're not gonna have a clock ticker, uh, but what we did see was a set kind of roll through wide right when we had the horn. 
and now there kind of a, seems to be a little bit of a heat bubble situation. Is there a reset situation coming up here? Well, it's possible. It's uh, The wind was actually picking up about 10 minutes ago, more than this, was stronger than this, and just as we've started, the wind seems to have backed off. The riders are having a very hard time holding position and getting into a wave. Um, if the wind continues to be like this, I think we'd have to carry in the heat. So there's a chance the wind will come in during this next few minutes, uh, and that would be okay. Yeah, in my book, you know, you want to give a good amount of time for these riders to catch waves, but it's also very apparent here that you know you've got a level of current pushing you on and off the reef actually getting you know sitting in place earlier got you you know sucked up top as yeah you paddle down so i think that might have just been a slight pause i wouldn't really press the panic button uh i think anybody who's going to end up getting on a wave right now the last thing they're going to want is to cancel heat so yeah to me right now we still need to wait this out. I believe all the way upwind, like, doesn't fool me that that is looking like Liam Dunkerbeck and then Morgan Noirot behind him. They're in prime position, aren't they? And Bjorn is uh, not going to be able to do much more than try to water start in this eight knot wind right now, which was 12, you know, rightfully about 12 to 15 knots earlier. But this is how cloud break and most of these, you know, spots in Fiji I've noticed. They just, you know, the wind swells in and out. And this is giving us a look here because we might have our first ride of the contest here. We've got some sets coming through. Liam's in position. He might get on this area. He's on. Uh, it's a nice little wave. It's not one of the big ones, that's for sure, but it's a good warm-up one for him. He's riding in very light wind. Liam would be one of the lighter riders in the heat. Uh, Camille would no undoubtedly be the lightest. Morgan and, and Liam also pretty light. Um, Bjorn's still struggling to get up in the water start. Um, well, we've had one ride, nothing amazing. We've got one ride under the belt, and I, I do think that that does count for something. Uh, we need to have a full body of work here. It's a 25 minute heat. Right. Uh, it's also a really non critical heat if you really think about the scope of things. Yeah, there's no elimination in this one, but, but we still want everyone to be firing on all cylinders, don't we? We want it to feel great. We do. I feel, uh, my opinion would be uh, you run it no matter what and then and assimilate after it's done and just, you know, proceed, in my opinion. But there's Morgan Raro kicking out, you know, giving it a look, maybe not that. You know, sometimes you let Cloudbreak decide this. Right, Cloudbreak's having a bit of a breather right now. I mean, the sets that were coming through before were just gigantic. And, well, there was one that John John got, I think it was, wasn't it? It was just amazing. And now it's just having a pause. It's hard to see from this angle where we are hiding behind the reef uh, in the nice protected water for this mooring. It's hard to see what's going on out in the ocean, but uh, what we are told by the forecast that it's due to come in between now and the next 30 minutes. It's supposed to be getting out. Liam Dunkerbeck on top of the reef. Beautiful looking wave. This is a good looking ride. This is the product that you like to think that wave sailing can deliver here. Just a little underpowered on the inside kicks out. He's got two scores. He might get swiped here. We'll see if that actually happens. Looks like he's got enough speed to make it over this wall. Good clean escape. We've just had some information back from some of the riders who are in the boats and talking to the captains with the walkie-talkies. They're asking for a longer heat, which is pretty understandable if it stays like this. But I think even a longer heat in this light breeze, it might be better to just hold until the breeze gets better. I don't know. What do you think, Kai? I think you're looking at a heat that truly has no consequences. I think we just need to run it no matter what happens. You have a result and you keep moving. And if you you know can't handle that, then... <laughs> Sorry. I think we need to run it, Simeon. I'm yep. just telling you. Well, when I tell you what, when, the, when these sets cut coming through, which is inevitable soon, they're going to come through and uh, that'll change the whole game of how this looks. That's what we're trying to manifest here. And as if on cue, Camille Jubon, who knows how to play the light wind game better than anybody, I assure you, in big and small waves, is pumping on to what looks like a bit of an upper corner here. He wants to get on a wave and he has done exactly that. Kamiji Bond from Guadalupe riding his S2 rig and drops into a nice looking green wall there. Yeah, that's a good one. He's got a little a little spray coming out of there. Beautiful turn. He's got this beautiful thing, flow, doesn't he? This thing connected uh, a fair distance and it became what would be very comparable to Liam's ride actually. 
and Morgan Noirot up top. Drops in. Nice flare on that. Really showing what you can do here with the rig. You know, get cut back, you get a little extra momentum. Good little hook off the top. Right behind him is Liam Dunkerback. Yeah, Liam's coming in. He looks like he's on the shoulder. He's trying to get in there harder, but he hasn't got that same sort of lift that Morgan had. Morgan had two great hits there, didn't he? Morgan, arguably, with the best riding of the heat so far, but I won't really talk about scores. I think he really rode that wave aggressively. It was good wave selection. Things are good. Things are really opening up here, Simeon. Uh, I have a good feeling about this. Uh, I do feel sorry for Bjorn. He's just not able to really get it to go, but... Everybody else has activated in one form or another. Russ Faro yet to get on the board, but he's got no slouch in uh, light wind at all. Uh, if you're looking at Liam, Morgan, and Kamib, all have scores, correct? That's correct. Yep, they're both, they're both pumped. Well, Liam's pumped out the most. Morgan's done a couple, one really good one. And uh, Kamib's done a couple of nice, really beautiful, smooth turns. Uh, probably give, uh, Morgan's had some, had some really nice hits there. It'll be interesting to see what the judges say. The judges up behind us are Angela Cochran, two-time World Wave Champion, Jessica Crisp, one-time World Wave Champion and overall, plus a bunch of, I think, 20 amateur racing titles, and five-time Olympian, and Jane Seaman, Australian Champion. So we've got some pretty solid judges up there in the uh, crow's nest. On the outside, very clearly on the horizon, seems to be a pretty good wall of water heading towards the top Ooh, of the reef. that's starting to build up in there. Look at that. Now, who's in position for it? Might be Russ Faro. And this would really change the game because this is almost one of the bigger waves anybody's caught in this heat so Ooh, far. Oh, this that is a nice wave. Kamiji Bon fading into it. Really nice looking wave. This is what we came here for. Absolutely dissects that first turn. Perfect position off the bottom turn, sending buckets of spray all the way down the line. A really nice looking ride. Behind him, Liam Dunkerbeck. Having a great heat, staying active for sure. First aerial of the contest goes to Liam Dunkerbeck, and that's going to really help his chances to be in the top two in this heat. Kami also did the same. Whoa, Liam's down. He's in the hole. Held on a little too long there. Hopefully he's not too deep and he can get out there quickly. Liam's about to get the wave on the head there. It might push him a little further. No, he got under it. He's swimming for his gear. Oh, this could change things. First rider to swim for gear. That gear's moved into the reef pretty fast. While we pick up the pieces, hopefully no pieces of Liam Dunkerbeck, I believe Russ Faro now has dropped into his first wave of the heat. Kind of does a casual bottom turn, a little slow, but he's getting on his horse here. That's a beautiful looking wave. Good portion of the reef. Trying to set up his target, maybe getting a little bit ahead of it, but he's certainly trying to stay off of shish kebabs as well, and he kicks out for his first score of the heat. Behind him, Morgan Noirot. And you're getting this from the drone angle. You kind of see the whole picture here. Morgan punches his bottom turn, trying to back up that high score he must have gotten on that first wave. Really good surfy windsurf style there with that drawn-out bottom turn and a flying kick out. So kind of a mid-level mid ride there in terms of where on the reef he was. But Morgan's gone to town twice now and uh, definitely done some pretty aggressive riding. You know, this is a hard call between who's going to, you know, be in the top two here. Camille certainly uh, making a case for it. Liam Dunkerbeck certainly making a case for it. But he's got a bit of a timeout on his hands right now as he's getting, uh, getting to the jet ski and having to reset and get out of there. And meanwhile, on the outside... Uh, we do have Bjorn not quite able to get on anything yet, um, but everybody else in this heat has waves, and I think this is going to have to count, no question about it. Yeah, it's looking like everyone's having a bit of a, you know, now they're having a field day after a slow start, now the swells are coming through, they've been able to get these set waves, and it's, they've proven to be able to get on them, um, and that's the main issue with these things. This wave is so fast, you get plenty of apparent wind, plenty of speed, plenty of power, um, it's not 
it's not the same as having 20 knots and uh, all the full power, but they're they're making some beautiful rides here. I do feel bad for Bjorn. He's just up now. Classic float and ride conditions, and uh, some of those all-time wave sailing sessions are always based on float and ride. You got to be able to just bobble in the zone. And then right when a good set comes in, you know, hopefully you're right behind the peak. You can just highline it through, get right to the bottom and start going to work, drawing those lines. Windsurfing is great because you can build momentum with your apparent wind. And it's all about the wind direction. Side offshore wind builds your apparent wind. And you're able to generate a lot of momentum. What you see these guys do, you know, they're barely creeping around right now. But the second a good wave comes in, you know, you get into the, get into the top part of the wave and and the waves doing the work for you here and that's in just as much of a sense of a surfing contest truly because a lot of these wave sailing events around the world are also based on jumping and uh, certain other technical virtues it's a really beautiful lineup and we've seen it at its best yesterday was one of the most amazing days of surf i've ever seen and i think a lot of my friends who were surfing with me would say the same thing that appears to be Kamiju Bon pumping into a very nice looking wave. He hustled that one from the pack and this thing is going to offer him, who is the most experienced Cloudbreak windsurfer here, a chance to possibly punt a good air. Let's see it, Kami. He's highlining it. He's looking for the lip and he's going to bounce up. There it is. And he connects to the trough. Gets under it again, second air, skipping around. That is, let me promise you, only the beginning of what Kami is capable of. That cat skies gigantic aerials and like any cat, always lands on his feet. He is a remarkable rider. Those uh, sessions that he's had documented from 2019 when he was here with Sarah Hauser, when they had that very big swell, just showed how much control and precision he has in reading this wave. positioning uh, a lot of ability to be uh, mobile doesn't help you here if you're on too big of gear once you get on the <laughs> wave at cloud break you realize you've got to you've got to you know you got to bring a knife here and you got to knife into things and Kami showed that you know you could see on that last ride that he just stayed on the high line but kept himself deep so that when the lip through he was ready to just spring out there and I do sense that he is a little antsy because he knows that you know this isn't just a free session this is a contest and you know you you're not at cloud break all the time with the water clear here this is a gigantic opportunity you know not just competitively speaking but just go big speaking yeah it certainly is i mean uh these guys, the surfers were very gracious. They had the morning and had wonderful surf sessions. Um, John John Florence amongst these uh, you know, luminaries. Some very high standard of surfing here this morning. And now that they were, uh, the wind was coming up and our crew went through and asked them all if they would be okay to leave. And they all knew the contest was coming and they all very graciously did. And we're, um, we're very grateful to the surfers for being cool with this. This is a really nice way to sort of cooperate and use the glassy mornings and the windy afternoons together. Thank you, Simeon Glosson. Thank you for everything you did to make this event happen. We appreciate your insights and everything you've done along with Fiji Surf Company to make this happen. It's a busy man right there. This tour began in Japan. It's gone to Oregon, Pistol River. It's coming here. It's going to Peru. And it's going to finish the year on Maui for the Aloha Classic, one of the longest running windsurfing events there is this is the inaugural 2022 Fiji Pro Invitational and you are looking at cloud break showing what it can do it's not firing every minute here that's why we have these long heats and I wonder how much longer we have in this heat 13 more minutes to go 
judges are, you know, busy dis discussing. I will get fed some information about who's in the lead here. Maybe I can get my top two uh, stuff like that. Here comes Simeon with the update. Okay, just back from the judges. We've got uh, Camille and Morgan are running the front of the pack right now with Liam hot on their tail. Camille and Morgan have got a beautiful uh, bunch of little... Uh, sorry, oh, we've got to stop. We've got to stop. There's some sets coming. Yeah, so it's Camille and Morgan in first, and Morgan's going to back that up right now with a nicely placed ride. Really got behind the crown there. I heard the judges go, yeah. And that means that he got under the thing and really gave it some contact under the lip, which Morgan really likes to do. It might be subtle, but he is cutting it up. And that's just a signal of things to come, guys, because there looks like a considerable exchange setting up on the outside. And I'm pretty sure that's Russ Faro kicking out of his second opportunity. Bjorn Dunkerbeck, unfortunately, just hasn't been able to get into the game here, but he's watching proudly, I'll tell you that, one way or the other. And Russ, if I'm not mistaken, now opts for the wave behind him and drops in. And that's a classic style that he's displaying. Good wave selection in the game. Nice drop bottom turn there. No contact with the lip, but he's going downtown. And this is gonna, you know, be a case between him and Liam Dunkerbeck. You know, maybe for the placement, but really nothing at stake other than who's in first and second and gonna be seated into round three. The other three riders are going straight back to round two. That's the gist of it. The wind looks solid here. And any doubts about this heat, I think, are being put to rest as we get closer to the two o'clock mark that we thought this would be started at. So we are actually a little bit ahead, Simeon. Yeah, that's right. Um, that little light wind moment at the beginning of the heat, which might have lasted eight or nine minutes, um, seems to have been cleared away. The riders have now got enough puff in their sail to navigate getting back up to the lineup and into position and certainly enough to get into waves and that's really the criteria that we're after. Um, this heat is full of very light sailors other than Bjorn and so Bjorn is having a much harder time than the others. Um, weight is such a huge factor in these light breezes or heavy breezes, the, the advantage turns. So it's a really challenging thing for Bjorn who's now moving well in this breeze that's come up. He's now putting himself into position and here comes the sets. I think everybody in that lineup should make sure Bjorn gets one. I'll tell you, I wouldn't hustle him at this point. And it's looking good. It's looking good. Dunkerbeck might get on the board here. There's definitely one after this. And, you know, it's going gonna, it's gonna to take a bit of pumping from him. You know, he's coming off a hip replacement. Certainly always been one of the bigger riders. Uh, no question. But regardless, this has been a great first heat in light of everything that we hoped for. Some good opportunities. Five minutes left in heat one. We will keep you updated right now. It's Camille and Morgan ahead. And Morgan certainly backed that up with his latest ride. It's been really well sailed heat by everybody. Morgan Raro sniffing something up top and <laughs> he's found another really nice looking wave. These ones that run up the top are giving you the length of ride that gives you a chance to draw off the bottom, you know, kind of cut back to the power source. But here he gives some target practice, just gives it another hack there. He wants to hit something. It's, it's evident that he wants to make contact. Kamiji Bond behind him. These are the leaders of this heat and appropriately they're riding the same set. Morgan sailing brilliantly in my opinion. Surfing brilliantly too. And believe me, no better way to learn how to sail Cloudbreak than to 
get your surfboard and your bar of wax and put in some time. No doubt about it. Two minutes left in this heat. The wind looking solid, maybe a little bit of an in-between pause in the waves. Most of the sailors in this heat are on the far outside. Uh, Kamis kind of, like he might have scraped into another good one there. Kamis harvesting nuggets. Look at that. Nah. Oh well. What a privilege to be able to be here at Cloud Break. One of the very best waves in the world. Nobody starts comparing another wave to Cloud Break. And I don't really think there's a wave out there that you can say, well, it was, you know, it was like Cloud Break. It's one of a kind, the way this wave breaks and the way it bends around this reef. It's super unique and it's absolutely really good for wave sailing under the right conditions. And this is making a case to be the right conditions here. Camille Jubon slicing and dicing gets a nice little punty aerial kind of video game style. Bing! Does the kick out for survival. Didn't really want to do the aerial onto shish kebabs. Probably feels pretty good about his chances to take a rest through round two because it's looking like Juban is going to make it to round three along with Morgan Noirot, but it's not over yet. We're about to drop the flag. Liam Dunkerbeck has a buzzer beater potential here. This is a nice wave. What can he put together here? Nice little cross lip there. We're 10 seconds away. This is going to be the last ride of the heat and Liam Dunkerbeck possibly making his case. Is it going to be enough to get into the top two? Five, four, three, two one, go. Heat's over. Well done, everybody, to make that happen. Keeping the faith. A bit of a slow start, but uh, nothing serious. No reason to panic. And that was a good way to go there. Well sailed. I'm going to just go ahead and assume that Morgan and Camille were the uh, victors in that based on our information leading up to that. So now we are in the second heat. And that consists of Bent Rodinger, Antoine Martin, Robbie Swift, Frederico Mauricio, and Charlie Boy Van der Mullebroek. I almost said that right. Van der Mullebroek. And Charlie, I will start with, lives in Tahiti and sails Chopu. Yeah, he windsurfs Chopu. Charlie Boy's super gnarly, and uh, it, he has appreciated the length of ride that he is experiencing at Cloud Rick because Chopu's kind of more of an intense moment of horror. Looks like Russ Faro trying to squeak one in there. Post heat, not going to count, but why not get the shot? I don't see why not. And it's beautiful to be here. This is really favoring windsurfing in my opinion. Earlier, as Simeon was mentioning, uh, there were a few all-stars in the lineup. I mean, it was amazing to watch. And I will just come through with that. That has translated into now this kind of like windy alternative to it. Simeon, what do you have for me? We have the judges sheets. Here they are. All right. Let's see. Um, the high scores look to be a 6.8 and a 6 for Morgan and a 6.2 and a 5 for Camille. So that's that's really where it boils down to uh, in the averages, we should say. Um, it's the same for all the judges. It's the same for all the judges. And, you know, without, you know, getting in, I don't I think that gives us an idea of the range. That's perfect. Now, we're in the transition period here for this next heat. And... You know, those are good scores, and it, and, it, and it reflects, I think, very much the uh, momentum that was built in that heat. And now we stop it. Okay. We will be back for heat number two. Thank you.